So I'm just going to introduce. Hello, everybody. We're about to have a talk from Kristen, who's been working in the recruiting space for a couple of decades, and she will be discussing how to get a job in the infosec space. So with that, take it away, Kristen. Hello, everyone. I'm doing this without my notes because why not? Um, this is the welcome to my final iteration of but I still need a job. Um, best practices. Wish I was really in Boston, actually. And um, I really am a Red Sox fan. So that's real. Um, so welcome to my talk. <clears throat> so the things that we are here to discuss today are the following. A little bit about, and as you can imagine, when I when I first when I wrote this series for 2020, quarantine wasn't a thing, COVID wasn't a thing, um, and so I had to adapt the slides a little bit uh, some way into the year. This is uh, my seventh time doing this talk, so maybe I don't need my notes. Um, I'm going to try to add um, while we're facing our challenges, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them because here we are at the end of September, and I think most of us get it by now, right? We already know what to do, so I won't, I won't spend too much time on that, other than to say that I, I personally think we can use some of what we're dealing with as, uh, from a candidate's perspective to our advantage. Um, and then I'm gonna go over what I like to just call the classic fundamentals on um, challenges that we all face. Uh, when we're looking to make a change in our career, then we'll do a QA and a if we have time. Um, this is about an hour's worth of content, and I'm doing it in 30 minutes, so we'll see. But I'm a talk faster. All right, who am I? I am Kirsten Renner. Uh, I work at a company called Novetta. We're an advanced analytics company. Uh, my only plug for the day is we have over 300 jobs open at the moment, and we pay five to 10,000 per referral. I'm a college dropout. Uh, started my career doing software development using Visual Basic a long time ago. Um, as in the introduction was mentioned, I've been recruiting for, for uh, about two decades. I've been doing this for a while. Um, started off in telecom and then I've been in InfoSec since uh, for about 10 years. Um, I'm the co-organizer of the Car Hacking Village and um, and I run Ultra. If you don't know what an Ultra is, it's anything longer than a marathon. And I didn't just put Red Sox on there for uh, for this conference. I really am. Um, there's my crew. All right. So here's the perspectives that I am offering to you today. Um, I have been a candidate. Uh, I have been a recruiter. And I have been and currently am a hiring manager. So I hope that having all those different perspectives um, is, is not only going to be useful to anyone looking for a job, but also um, for people looking to hire as well, right? So it's going to be good for you either way if you're trying to hire, if you're looking for a job, if you ever have or you ever will, this content should be useful for you. Um, so speaking of perspectives, um, all of these um, surveys that you see, these are not these are not scientific surveys. These don't have thousands of responses. They probably all have maybe hundreds of responses. I either posted them on Twitter and or LinkedIn, and then I just captured what you all were saying because when I was going to or when I was thinking about writing um, these talks, I was like, what do people really want to uh, what would they want to hear about and where are they in terms of their career searches? Um, and I asked Dorf Bader if I could quote him and he said yes. Um, and and I, I didn't word it any better than him, so I didn't even try. Um, but it really and truly is good career hygiene always to uh, at least keep your options open, depending on where you are. Um, if you think about it, depending on where you are in your career search, whether you um, are unemployed or uh, feel stuck, you're not advancing in the in the way that you would like to, there's there's always reason for you to be uh, open. And, and I, I am a really good example of that because when I met the CEO of my current company, 
Uh, I was happily employed. I was not looking for a job. Um, and I had no intention of leaving uh, where I was. So um, just kept my options open. And uh, and it's good to network and good to have conversations. <clears throat> so things are different. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, at this point, um, we should all be like, yeah, I get it. Uh, we haven't been to a real conference. We haven't been to a, a, a in real life uh, in person conference um, in a long time. It's been it, it feels like forever for me anyway. Um, I feel like it was uh, right around March when uh, when it all ended. <laughs> I did this in person in Tampa and then uh, at Besides Nova, and we've been doing it virtual ever since. So. Um, we're going to talk about, um, you know, what do we do different? What are your best practices? Um, and I'm going to ask you to do as I say and not as I do because I make a lot of mistakes. Personally, uh, I was having a little bit of technology issues this morning, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and uh, there's a glare on my glasses right now, right? So I'm breaking a lot of rules, but, um, but do as I say, not as I do. And how can we use this to our advantage? Um, if you are a candidate, and this is good for, for employers to listen to, too, because this is the advice that I'm giving. Um, if the future employer is not being flexible, is not accommodating you, is not providing you with what you need um, as a candidate, you know, for the uh, virtual interviews and virtual orientations and all the different things that are that should be happening not just in the candidate experience, but also um, what they are telling you they're going to be able to do for you when you start um, in terms of, you know, whether or not you have to go into the office. And um, another thing that is um, important for you to think about, the more that the future employer is able to be accommodating to you as a candidate and as a new employee, probably the better relationship they have with their customers. And here's why. If their end customers, they're providing a service, if they're a service company or a product company, the customers are going to be more accommodating to the company as well. Right? So it's a really good tell if they will give you flexibility, if they will let you work remotely, if they, depending on the circumstance, whether you're in the cleared space or not, there's there are restrictions around the type of work that you have to do, and those restrictions are, are going to come into play when um, accommodations need to be made. You know, if you've got kids at home, you have a whole other ball of wax you're dealing with now, right? Your kids can't go to school, and and you're at home trying to teach them, and you've got meetings going on, and you've got a lot going on. This is this is interesting, um, and it, it's very telling how accommodating they're going to be to you. And it goes both ways, right? If your candidate um, is uh, throughout the experience, you know, not being not being flexible as well, that will be telling uh, what it's going to be like to employ those people as well. So. Look at your um, interview experience. Look at um, how flexible they're going to be, how understanding they're going to be, and use that to your advantage when you're deciding um, which offer to accept. <clears throat> and so I really um, don't know that we need to go through all of these um, because, like I said, I think we're all experts now, or as close as we can be. Like I said, that we had a little bit of issues this morning. I. Uh, I still can't, I can't quite get into Discord today for some stupid reason. Um, but you should always, always, always test all the things. Now, uh, 30 minutes ago, uh, uh, Ray couldn't get on to, he didn't have, he forgot to get a ticket. So I don't know if he's going to see this or not, although it's being recorded. And he's, he's seen me tell this joke before. Um, <clears throat> but it's a good example. The first virtual talk. Um, the first real virtual uh, conference uh, that I spoke at this year uh, was the Many Hats Club Isolation Con. And I went into the green room like I was supposed to early, and, um, and uh, Ray was handling, um, Ray Redacted was helping me. And he was like, okay, let's test this out. Let me see if I can hear you, see you, and see your slides. He was like, okay, yay. And the mistake that I made, and many of us, 
if you look at your computer right now, you probably have many browsers open. You probably have many tabs open on your browsers. And you might also have many documents open uh, at one time, as I did at that time. But on my screen, I could just see what I was looking at, uh, which was my slides. But <laughs> and I remember Ray said, close everything, close all the things. And um, <laughs> I didn't close all the things. And uh, let's just say um, some personal documents were open, and that's the first thing he saw. So it's a little joke between us. But you should close everything. Close all the windows. Close everything you're not going to use. Close everything you don't want, potentially. Whoever's watching you in the interview or in the presentation to see. Think about distractions, obviously. Um, probably my dog's going to bark at some point during this. But, you know, close the windows. Um, <clears throat> look at the lighting. Look at the, the sound. Um, and be aware of, of what you're doing. Also, think uh, more now so than ever, um, think about the, the, the footprint that you're putting out into the digital universe, right? Because um, everyone's looking at it. The hiring managers are looking at it. The recruiters are looking at it. Uh, we're looking at um, the things that you say. I'm not saying don't be who you are, because that's one of, the, that's hopefully what they put on my tombstone, like be yourself. Um, but think about the messages that you're sending, right? So if every single day without fail, you complain about your boss or you complain about your job or, you know, um, you're just you're just that that squeaky of a wheel. Um, I think it sends I think it sends the wrong message. We should just look for some balance in what you're in what you're putting out there um, in the virtual world because we're looking at it more than ever. Um, how to dress in a virtual interview. I've gotten that question a lot. Like I said, be yourself, but um, be aware of what you have on. Um, I actually, I was listening to what Chloe was saying in the keynote about um, kind of the the imagery of uh, of the hoodie, and I got to tell you, I ha I honestly wear a hoodie probably 362 days a year. Um, but I but I get what she's saying, right? So it depends on on what you're trying to get across. Do you have to put on a three piece suit before your virtual interview? Of course not. Um, but be aware of, uh, of, of how you look, of is, is what you're wearing distracting, is it, is it a bunch of weird stripes or patterns that aren't going to translate well on the screen and stuff like that. Um, and I really love, and, uh, and I stole this from somebody else, <laughs> but that you should rehearse and that you should practice. You can practice uh, with a friend. You can do fake interviews, you can do mock interviews, um, or you can just record yourself and, and see how it goes. Uh, one other thing I should have said is to, to always remember to look at the camera to be a little bit more engaging. It's hard. Uh, it's hard not being on stage, seeing seeing faces, but uh, it's more engaging. I'm not going to get into this one too much more, um, but uh, because I'm, I'm halfway through my time already, um, so on to the fundamentals. <clears throat> you all said to me uh, when I was about to do B sides, uh, Tampa, and then Nova. Uh, you all said that networking. I was a little bit to see that you all said that networking was the thing that you wanted the most help with. Um, so I'll spend a little bit more time on that one. Real quick, I'll say we all know about job boards. We all know what they are. Uh, I preface to say that I am not saying um, anything good or bad about anything listed on the screen uh, or any of the, any of the products. Um, two things to say. Um, one thing that people don't even uh, potentially realize, this is that every state has a state employment board. They do because they have to. And every employer is supposed to be posting their jobs there. And a lot of this happens automatically through their applicant tracking system. They post a job there, it gets scraped by the, uh, the state job board. So if you uh, are interested in being in another state, if you want to relocate to another state or you want to see what's going on there in that state, now more than ever because of the virtual environment and aspect of jobs being offered, um, you'll find out about jobs that are available to you where you are or where you want to be that you never knew existed because of the state employment job board. And uh, for example, uh, there was a big I won't say the company, but a big company that I did not realize was in a certain state. And when I was uh, testing this uh, at, at Besides Tampa, I said, 
let's test it out. Everybody whip out your phone and um, it's fun to do live and um, pick a state, look for their look right now for their state employment board and um, raise your hand if you find a company that you didn't realize was there and a bunch of people are like, whoa, I didn't realize random big company was in this particular state because when I, the recruiter, or when my recruiters are opening the job in the applicant tracking system, they're going to list the states where the job is available. So now if it's virtually available, it's going to be available in a lot more places. So it's going to get scraped out and it's going to get posted there. So take a look at those. Um, they're state run, so they're not really awesome uh, in terms of um, the way that the uh, websites are laid out, but, uh, but that's very useful. Uh, very, very important. If you don't get anything else out of this, remember this. Um, I hear every other day or I see every other day people complaining about how horrible job descriptions are. I get it. I apologize on behalf of um, all hiring managers and recruiters everywhere in every job description that was ever written. I get it. I'm sorry. There should never be an entry level job asking for a CISSP. What? That makes no sense. I don't know why that happens. I'm sorry. I could spend an hour talking about why I think it happens. But what I will say, and this is very important, is you should always apply. Okay, so be reasonable, don't be silly, but if you're, start at the finish line, shoot for what you want, look for those jobs. I want to be a CISO, I want to be a solutions architect, I want to be, look for the job titles that fit where you want to end up. Look through it, understand and realize that since they're not all going to be written in a compliant and, and logical manner uh, for various reasons, and go through it. And I'm speaking just for a moment um, more to women than men to say that you are statistically less likely to apply to a job that you don't check all the boxes on. Apply. Do that for yourself. Um, you get into the system, and then we'll talk about what to do after that. Um, don't forget to network. Networking is extremely important, especially now more than ever in terms of social media. Um, Twitter's my favorite. A lot of 99% uh, of the recruiters that I know, uh, their favorite is LinkedIn. Um, if you are able to have a LinkedIn account, uh, some jobs won't let you, but if you are able, you should do that. Um, don't forget about job fairs, even now in the virtual environment, they are happening in industry conferences. My favorite part of them is the villages, and uh, the villages are a great place for you to do, uh, to learn and network at the same time. If you have the opportunity, always look to volunteer. Volunteering is going to help you learn and grow and network, and uh, I can't say enough about it volunteering as a good career move for you. So real quick about DMs, mine are open. Um, don't punish the people that have open DMs by uh, obviously don't be a creeper, but beyond that, um, two things. You will notice I use myself as an example. When you go to my, well, I don't know when I had this on my page, but it probably still says that it, it says, if you're BD or recruiting and I don't know you, I'm probably not going to connect to you. And oh, by the way, I'm not looking. So then you see an image that is, says, hi, I'm a recruiter. Do you want a job? Well, if you really, really were interested in me and you really cared about me, then you read my about me and it says, don't do that. So don't do that. Take a minute to really look. Don't use these tools that go out and um, are, are, are reaching out to everybody and, and, and showing them that you actually don't care about me. You actually aren't interested in knowing about me because you didn't even bother to read where I said, don't do that. Uh, the only other thing I did here was um, I saved all the people's identities. But if all you're saying to me is, hi, hello, uh, that's not very compelling, right? I don't need a dissertation. Nobody does. but. Um, and you don't have to be super clever, and you don't have to be super hilarious, but um, be a little bit more compelling when you're reaching out to somebody uh, in through in-mailing or through uh, direct messaging. Um, tell them why you're reaching out. 
please understand and know that, you know, I, I only have a couple thousand followers, so I can only imagine what it's like for people that have tens of thousands of followers going through their DMs and uh, uh, be a little bit more compelling, like tell the person why they should bother to open your message if they don't know you. <clears throat> a little bit about resumes. Um, obviously tell the truth. Uh, the most important advice uh, to the resume, and remember, as much as job descriptions stink, there's just as many stinky resumes out there. So do uh, everyone a favor. Consider that the person reading your resume, there's going to be many different layers of people looking at your resume. There's going to be sources, there's going to be people that aren't that technical. They're looking at a lot of resumes. In the same way that you will want to compel someone to look at your direct message, you're going to want to compel someone to look at your resume, to continue to read. Um, I don't really care about the length of your resume. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of it has to be this exact many pages. I don't care about that as much as I care about the order. The very first thing you should do in one or two sentences is you should say, I'm a this and I want to be a that. I am a systems engineer and I want to be a solutions architect. I am a pen tester and I want to be a security researcher. Please don't say look at the content and figure it out for yourself because probably I've got resume fatigue. I've already looked at a lot of resumes. I've got 30 jobs open per recruiter, 15 recruiters, and they've got hundreds of applications per job. So tell them, please, I'm a this and I want to be a that. Um, then go into the technical skills, know that there are, I don't want to call them robots, but there are some scripts that are set up the night before. They're saying, go through all these resumes, keywords matter, keywords are important. If you're not hearing from somebody, what you should then do after you apply, give it one business day, go to LinkedIn, 99% of the recruiters are using it and they have their DMs open and say, hi. I am this person, I applied for this job. Look for an identifier, look for a job number. And do customize your resume to the job. Uh, real quick, uh, do a little bit of research uh, before going into your interview. Come prepared with questions. One of the most important things that you can do that is going to be very revealing to you as a candidate when you are in your interview. At the end, when they say the famous, do you have any questions for me? You say yes. You look at the person and you make it about them. You say, um, what hesitations did you have coming into this company? How long have you been here? And my favorite, what have you learned? You're, if for a moment, you will catch them off guard, and it will be their opportunity to tell you exactly what it's like for them to work in the company that you're interested in working for. I'm running short on time here. For real, for real, for real, be yourself. Always be who you are. Because, and I do liken it to dating, I don't have any dating experience, but I imagine that if you went on a date and you said, I love kids, I love to travel, I go to church every Sunday, and those things are not true. In a short period of time, uh, you have guaranteed that the relationship will fail. So why don't you just be who you are? So as an example again, the, when I interviewed for the job I have now, uh, my hair was blue. I thought about, should I not have blue hair going to meet the CEO and whatever, but no, be who you are. Um, so it works out well. Real quick on negotiating, and I will share all these slides because I'm running out of time. Um, you do not have to tell how much money you currently make. That is literally irrelevant to what you should be making, okay? What you make um, has nothing to do with Gibbon about occupational qualifications. Uh, those that should be set by, there are federally mandated ordinances that have to be followed by employers, should be followed by employers. They pay you what you should be making based on your skills and your education and the geographical location. That's just the law. Um, Alyssa Miller talked about this, I think, yesterday on Twitter, true story. Um, and be, just come right down, don't, don't play games. I, I never did when I was recruiting. I would um, just say, hey, here's, here's what I can pay you. Um, always ask for what you need. Think about all the different aspects of compensation, right? Think about the 401k and, and, and do you have an incentive plan? And do you have an educational plan? And do you have a training program? And 
Um, so think about those different things and think about is there growth opportunities for me here? Think about in that moment in your career what matters to you and what you're looking for. Um, and just to wrap it up, because I think I only have about five minutes, um, always be open to new opportunities. Um, always be willing to negotiate, to network. Um, communication is key. Um, there are many, many, many volunteers that are available. Um, like I said, my DMs are open and I can connect you to people if I if I drop the ball, if anybody ever drops the ball, if anybody ever doesn't get back to you, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, all recruiters want to get back to you, they intend to get back to you, and if they don't, give them that one chance, ping them again, remind them, and at the very least, uh, they should be able to connect you to somebody uh, if they don't have the bandwidth to get back to you. Notice how you're being treated uh, in your candidate uh, experience. Notice how you're being treated Probably that's how you're going to get treated as an employee as well. Um, and thank you to all the volunteers uh, who put these all the B-sides together. So, ready for questions. Wow, thank you very much, Kirsten. And actually, I apologize, we've run over time, so we've got to wrap it up. But I really quickly want to ask, because this question got asked a while ago, are you going to be at B-sides Orlando Career Hacking Village? As a matter of fact, I am. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'll be there. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for participating. And Kirsten, just so you know, you don't have to close anything. I'm just going to de-promote you and I'll, I'll take care of all of this. So thank you, everybody. I'm not going to shut down the whole conference today. I'm not clicking anything. I'm just leaving the room. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Well, thank you again. Really appreciated your talk. Fascinating. Thanks.